I'm, I'm well. It's nice to see you. Absolutely. <laughs> I'd like to call to order the workshop for the Mayor and City Council City of Tawnytown for the month of August and ask Councilman Vigliotti to lead us in the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone, and welcome. First order of business tonight is uh, the oath of office for our incoming council person, Carl Ebaugh. It's good to welcome uh, one of Tawny Town's best friends back to the council. I'd like to ask Carl to come forward now, if he would, and I will administer the oath of office. Carl, if you'll raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Carl Ebal. I, Carl Ebal. Do swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Do swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland. I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland. And support the Constitution and laws thereof. And support the Constitution and laws thereof. And that I will do the best, to the best of my skill and judgment and, wait a minute, let me try that again. And that I will, to the best of my skill and judgment, diligently and faithfully and without prejudice or partiality. And I will, to the best of my <laughs> skill and judgment, diligently and faithfully and without partiality or prejudice. Execute the office of council member according to the Constitution and the laws of the state. Execute the office of council member according to the Constitution and laws of the state. Congratulations, welcome back. Thank you. I need you to sign this yeah. <laughs> document here to make it. Our clerk says that if you don't sign it, it's not valid. <laughs> I gotta sign it too. Here it is, August already. And Joe and I were just discussing whether I should wear my seersucker sport coat and after Labor Day oh, next so month. So comfortable tonight. We decided we were going to do that just to test the waters and see what happens. <coughs> the um, approval of the minutes will be uh, considered next Monday. Obviously, does anybody have any? Additions or corrections for the approval of the minutes for July 6th and July 11th regular meetings and the July 22nd closed session. Um, can I, Mr. Mayor, point out a few things. Um, on the July 6th draft of the minutes um, under approval, um, the last item here says approval of the Memorial Park sign. Um, we had discussed there that the sign surface was larger than allowed by the coming ordinance. But uh, actually the broadcast area of the sign that's been purchased to replace the Memorial Park sign is actually no larger than the current existing sign. Also, the current sign, Mr. Mayor, is illuminated with white light which disperses all over the neighborhood. But these signs are directional and you can dim them during the nighttime and they just look straight ahead so I would like the minutes to um, here, both here and in the 11th and the 13th to mention the correction of the data that was given during those meetings. This is not an oversized sign and it was purchased in the budget two years ago and it would be an improvement not only to the park but to our gateways and it also would be an improvement and will be an improvement since it's been purchased 
Well, this, and I, let me ask a question of the town manager, if it's okay. This, did, did we have this in the budget two years ago? My understanding no. was either one year ago or two last years. Last year. Last year, okay. I just want to be corrected on that. So I would like the minutes to reflect that the sign is less offensive and less, uh, is no larger than we the current sign. We didn't discuss that at the meeting, though, did we? Can we? Would this be better left for the old business, uh, make these comments under old business? Would well, it's again on, if you look at the 13th minute, it's the last item. It says motion to send to planning commission for a a recommendation by Foster, seconded what by what, what Sam what Betty, thinking, carried five to O. What I'm thinking, Councilman, is we address this under old business, and since we didn't specifically discuss the, the actual size of the sign during the meeting last month, perhaps we should include those words under the old business section rather than under the minutes section. I'm not, I'm not saying we shouldn't include them. Okay. I just think it would be a better spot to have I them. I think you're, that's probably good place. advice. I That's thank you for that. On the 13th meeting, um, once again, the, um, the minutes don't explain why uh, Councilman Frazier is opposing the Code of Conduct Ordinance. I had suggested wording that Councilman Frazier was warning the Council that adoption of the Code of Conduct would not follow the rules put forth in our charter for adoption since it wasn't adopted in a timely manner also that it would not follow the oath of office just Mr. Ebal, uh, Councilman Ebal just took, and it would not follow our Constitution because it restricts freedom of speech. I had mentioned those there. There's no mention of why I oppose these, and on Monday I want to offer language that says Frazier was opposed to adjournment because the people did not get a chance to speak. Also, I, uh, I didn't... I opposed the adjournment also. So twice in the minutes on the 13th, it just mentioned that I voted no, but there's no discussion. There was lengthy discussions on both of these, and the minutes aren't accurate if they don't include um, an explanation of what's happened in these meetings. No, the people that. did not get a chance to speak. We actually had a vote on restricting the public's right to speak at these meetings and Monday meetings at the last meetings. Let, let, me, correct let me correct you. should reflect that. Let me correct you. It's not the public's right to speak, it's their privilege to speak at the meetings. Yes, and I think it, it, it's a, I agree with you, Councilman. Okay, yes, it is just a, a correction there. Mr. Mayor, um, if I remember correctly, on July 11th, towards the end of the meeting, Councilman Frazier made a motion to adjourn, which I seconded and then it was voted down. I don't see that reflected in the minutes. Can yeah, we that add that in, please? <laughs> That's good viewing uh, on the TV if you watch these meetings on TV. That's fun viewing. I think that should be reflected because it was quite a little dance at the end. That's so I don't see it in the minutes. I don't know if it's... Do you recall the scenario? I'm not sure what meeting that the Councilman Frazier is even talking about. He keeps saying the 13th. And well, it's, it's the 11th. It's the 11th. It, it, yeah. it was the 11th, bespoke. not the 13th. And I guess I'll repeat what we've said at every meeting for the past several months is that these minutes are not going to include the fluff of explanations and reasons and things like that, especially one-sided. Just because you voted no doesn't mean you get your say in the minutes, especially. Well, again, it, it, well, we disagree it, with it the amazes council. me that we have to discuss this every meeting. Yeah. We disagree I mean, I don't with know the council. Why we have to do that? In the advice that the meeting should not read as a narrative of what happened legally between the councilman at the front of the meeting. That's what the law clearly states. But the minutes should reflect. I presented that data before to that, the council. Unfortunately, you're incorrect. You see that that's only your opinion. No, no. I the legal the opinion law is that the, what the minutes are properly recorded as they are presented. The, the the spirit of Maryland law is that when you read the minutes, you ought to get an idea of what happened at the meetings. Anybody that picks up this single page to truncate them so that they don't reflect what actually happened is to produce inaccurate. Well, again, I, 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 I grow weary of having to address this every meeting. Now, and, on the agenda, and, Mr. And, Mayor. Until, until we have different legal advice to the contrary, We'll record the minutes as they're being recorded. And they they meet all the guidelines that we've been told they meet all the guidelines, and we have to rely on our council's judgment on that, that they're they're, they're meeting all the guidelines required by the state. So if there if, if if there's not enough information there for you, that's just information that you lack. 
no one else is lacking it. No one else is objecting. Oh, to every it. reader, I, I disagree. So, I mean, with it's, the it's it's. I would appreciate it if you don't bring it up in the future. I well, mean, it's not everyone. It's a, now, it's the a minute, the, uh, Mr. Mayor, with uh, with uh, your approval, the agenda for tonight on August the third says approval of the minutes for July sixth and July eleventh, as you've corrected me, and also a special meeting on July the twenty second, which was a closed session. So I have some questions about that that I'd like to address because I'm not what clear on you these were, minutes. You if you can, if you can uh, move to those minutes, I'd like to discuss them. We received in this packet tonight a uh, notice of a record of a closed meeting dated June the 22nd at 7 p.m. at City Hall. And um, it says that I was marked absent but I was not absent this meeting. I didn't receive any notice of any said meeting. In fact, I was promised there wouldn't be a meeting between the time that I, of one council meeting and the next work session. I wanted to ask a couple of questions. When was it decided to have a meeting since there was no knowledge of any meeting when we met uh, earlier on the 13th and I was present for that meeting? Okay, first you were provided notice through your attorney. Uh, the letter was sent to your attorney just like everyone else. We're not allowed to contact you directly on matters where you have an attorney, and your attorney threatened the city with litigation on the matter that's is the subject of this meeting. So therefore, the notice was sent to your attorney in writing, just like they got. The actual date that the notice was sent, I don't recall exactly which day it was, but we can find that out if that's important, but you should contact your attorney. Well, and that's, that's not correct. Was. What actually happened in when, I'm, when we have meetings that are duly called meetings is I get a blue book delivered to my house no. and then I get notice of that. They're publicized publicly. I know when the meetings are uh, of the city council, but this meeting is an extraordinary meeting. Well, it was it an extraordinary not, meeting. I did not receive any notice on the 13th that there was going to be any meeting between that and the next work yeah, session. And I, I've unlike stated, what you said. I've stated the reason why, but I think maybe you need to expand so everyone understands why this meeting was so extraordinary. If you go to the next page about the topics discussed. Well, I thought I was going to ask right questions there. about that also. Well, good. I'll read it for you. A legal letter was received by the city threatening well, litigation read it. from an I'm attorney for Councilman of the Fraser. staff. Okay. The second question I have is uh, who decided to have a special meeting that didn't get noticed to Councilman Fraser? Who decided to have such a meeting? No one, because you got notice, so there was no meeting where you didn't get no notice. No one decides to call a meeting. No, you asked, was there a meeting where you didn't get notice? No, no, my question specifically, Councillor, was who decided to have a meeting between the 13th at the regular council voting session and the next meeting, which would have been the next work session? I, I believe the mayor called the meeting. That's correct. Right. I call all meetings. I don't have any notice from you that a meeting has been called. Your, your attorney does. Yeah, we've covered that. No, no. I've looked at what uh, Dan Cox has given me. I know no, no notice from the You need to take it up with mayor. him. It was yeah. given to me prior to a meeting on the 22nd. That's an matter up with him. <laughs> uh, when was it posted for the public that there was going to be a special meeting? Prior to the meeting at a reasonable time. There's. A, there's a law about how early you have to provide regular public meetings. And what does the law say? Guidelines. Yeah, it has to meet guidelines. What does it say? It, it, that I can just summarize it. I can't quote it, mm -hmm. but I'll summarize it. First of all, it says it has to be timely. It has to be in advance enough number of days. No, it doesn't say and that. And then it says also that you have to use such mechanisms uh, that people can find it, mm -hmm. which means to use, you pick maybe radio or newspaper or public notices, mm -hmm. posted notices. And that's um, the two major requirements of that law, which I've studied and read. Well, you should read it again, because it doesn't say those things. It you says that the notice has to be. meeting at 5 o'clock or 7.30. You're you just wrong about done. that. that <laughs> well, that wasn't well, done. When was, it, when was it well, public notified that there was going to be a public meeting? Prior to the meeting, I'll look at the letter that we sent your attorney. That was, it contained the notice I have a in copy there. of it here, then I'll let it make I it available. I thought you said didn't your attorney didn't give you didn't one. didn't have it. My, when I, my attorney was, did receive an email. Okay. And uh, we're getting closer to the truth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now tell us the whole truth. I was just asking questions, trying to find out whether you all were telling the truth. I wanted to know uh, 
when was it publicized that we were going to have a meeting? According, I wasn't according to the for rules a duly called meeting. It was publicized according to the rules established by the state. It was not. It was not. I, I, I wasn't absent for a duly called meeting because I wasn't duly notified. You were excluded. Of a that, that, that's a better way to say it. But there's no. Well, let me just nothing on there that, that on the form that says Y'all absent. But crazy. you were excluded for a reason. <laughs> the, the, the matters that we were discussing involved your bringing suit against council. Uh, I, no, so there is no you litigation shouldn't be privy to that discussion. against the city of Tonytown from me or my council. That is just a lie. There is no such thing occurring. Why do you say that? It's not true. It is true. There's no litigation this is what your attorney in the court is telling or any us. filings for any such litigation. In you the need court. to find another attorney. I want then. to say one other thing. The, you make a big mistake sending me to MACO because I sent, I took the the course on the open meetings law, and here are the, the, the here's the uh, all the slides, and the public can look at these slides, and it clearly says in order to have a secret meeting you've got to have a, a public meeting first. And there is no, this, these minutes are not only fraudulent, but they deceive the public because they claim there was some, some public meeting. There was no public meeting. I know of citizens that arrived for a meeting they learned about and were turned away by the city manager. Did you turn away people for the, for the public meeting that was held on the 22nd, Henry Hyde? Where did you get that? No. You did not turn away any citizens I did not. From the meeting held on the 22nd of June. That's a fact, no. I don't know where you came up with that. I just talked to them and they said so. They said they came to that meeting because there was a, mo a notice on the board out front and, and Donald Cosner had seen it and called one of them. And so they came to, at the d date and time of that meeting and were told they the could session. not come in because no session. such meeting had occurred. The closed session. The closed session? The closed session? I'm asking about the meeting that occurred that I marked absent from in these minutes on the 22nd of June. That was a closed that session. That was a closed session. And no public is not, public is not allowed. Closed, closed session means that it's not a public Who meeting. is the compliance officer for the open meetings law in our staff or on our, on our board? Who is the person that is charged and given the duty to comply with the open meetings law? Is it the mayor or is it the town manager? Is it the city attorney? Who's the person We've that's supposed to follow the law? completely with the open meetings law. No, I'm asking There's a question. There's no on our part. This is a serious the matter. Only, the only thing that's askew here is your information. No, this is a serious matter. There are 157 or 8 towns in the, in the state of Maryland. There are 23 counties, and there's one city government. And this law has been crafted over many decades to ensure that the business of the public is not occur in secret private meetings. That's exactly and right. And that is the reason this meeting is studied at that, MACO, that's why and that's such, the reason that's I went to that session. That's why there's such a narrow definition of what you can close a meeting for. There it is, and it has to be stated in the minutes at the well, following I think it meeting. Is. It's been two months since this happened. Well, These think, minutes think, should have been presented last month. I think it's time to move on. Can, this, Mr. This Mr. Mayor, going can, anywhere. Wait, I, I, I'd like okay, to hear let's what, move on to the Mr. next. Mr. Mayor, uh, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. I'd, I'd like to hear what the attorney has I, to say. I, I, have, um, I have the documentation. I mean, it just took me a while to get it. So if you bear with me, to answer your question, your attorney was sent a letter on June 20th. And the letter reads, Dear Mr. Cox, please be advised the Mayor and City Council will be meeting in closed session on June 22nd, 2016 at 7 p.m. in the City Hall pursuant to the provisions of 3305B7 of the General Provisions Article of the Maryland Annotated Code for the purpose of consulting with me to obtain legal advice. As a courtesy to you, I can inform you that the subject matter of this discussion will focus on the contents of your email dated the 25th, May 25th, 2016 and the correspondence dated June 13, 2016. These correspondences clearly state that you are representing Donald Frazier and express an adversarial position against the town, the city of Rising, city of Tawny Town, specifically including a threat of legal action to protect your client. As such, Mr. Frazier's interest in the matter presents a conflict with his fiduciary duties as a councilman on behalf of the city. Accordingly, it would be inappropriate for him to attend the above reference meeting and be party to discussion on legal matters related to a potential claim he may be making against the city. As you are aware, the rules of professional conduct prohibit me from contacting Councilman Frazier directly on this matter, thus I will leave it you to inform him of the situation. The letter that's referenced in here, the June 13th letter, and it's a lengthy letter from Mr. Cox, 
But the first paragraph says, on behalf of Councilman Don Frazier, the proposed City Town or Tawny Town Ordinance 22-2016, code of conduct would be amusing if it were not for an obvious attack on our American constitutional freedoms and form of representative government, which is not permit a duly elected official from being fined, sanctioned, or removed from office Amen. because of that. I agree with it that. goes on for two other paragraphs, and then the next paragraph states, Additionally, special immunities apply to elected legislators, which I outline here and below. Every part of the above cited ordinance burdens my client's free speech, as well as the speech and debate clause in its unconstitutional and valid. And any attempt by the mayor, council, and city of Tawnytown to pass any portion of this proposed ordinance 22-2016 are hereby on notice that all necessary and proper legal steps will be taken to protect the legal rights of Americans and my client. That's the threat of legal action. That's the letter that you handed out Oh, and to everyone them. has that right in America. That, that's fine. You handed you this. You have that right, and every councilman has a right to protect You obfuscate the that. issue. You handed this letter out at a meeting. I have to copies the entire, for anyone who wants to read it that's tonight. That's fine. I regret that the press is not here tonight. I'm because, sure, um, because you can't grandstand well when they're not no, here. No, no, because they should know that the open meeting law in the state of Maryland <coughs> forbids any secret meetings and that you have to first hold a public meeting and vote in public to close such said meetings. And, and you, any other interpretation is bad legal advice, and this is a scandalous secret meeting, and it needs to be made public. You know what the remedy is. Go ahead and file. No, no, we're just going to elect people who won't follow the law. No. Come that, on. That, that's, so you I've read what the issue was meeting. about. You're clear about what it was about. This, these minutes, I've got to vote against these minutes, Mr. Mayor, because you can't hold a meeting, secret meetings, and you can't turn away people at the door. Well, see, the, the and term you that you're using, not vote the, the, in the, the, the in term private time The term meeting. that you are using, secret meeting, is invalid because it's not a secret meeting. To be a secret meeting, no one would have, no one would know about it uh, except the people involved. But this was clearly publicized, not only to the council and those involved, but to your very attorney. And it was posted outside. And if people showed up and were turned away. And if people showed up and were turned away. So, so to use the term secret meeting is purposely trying to divert the attention from the facts. Yeah. It's not true at all. You can't have closed session meetings. You can have Without closed sessions for a number of reasons. Open meeting. There are several reasons you can have take closed that sessions again for. And, it. and this is you've one of You've got to have an open meeting. And then you've got to we vote in public. We needed advice from our attorney. And I have a right to be here to vote no for the secret no, meeting. No, well, you then vote you, no. You're the, you're the litigant. You're the one that's And then you can go into executive session. And then you've got to pick minutes. a reason, Councilman Abel, you've got to pick a reason found in the law. Because <laughs> you can't just close meetings for anything. Like I go to him for the law, not you. Where was he? You, no, are, you the, a lawyer? The, are you a lawyer? I'm saying to you, Carl. Are you a lawyer? I'm saying, no, I've never been to law school. Great. I'm not yeah, a lawyer. Quiet. That's Please. why I need a lawyer with these folks. If I'm just the, saying the, the that, uh, that to say I'm absent from the meeting to close is not accurate because there was no open meeting where you voted to go into closed session. And the, and the reason that you said is inadequate as found in page D of the minutes that said a letter was received. If the, I was wondering what letter you were talking about that said anybody was going to court because that certainly is not this letter of June the 13th. It's a letter warning you not to violate your oath of office and pass a ne unconstitutional code of conduct bill. I've read it. You, proceeded you to all do. got it. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, these, these, these uh, <coughs> minutes are the, troubling indeed. The, Why the, were these the, very simple, the, the very vague minutes not presented the, last month? Councilman Frazier, I, the continued deceit and misinformation that you continue to spew out here tonight will not be listened to anymore. We're moving on. We've got a full agenda Please. and we're going to complete it. You can distort anything you want to distort, but we're either. not going to listen the to it. The people of Tony Town don't know what you did on the 22nd of June. I barely knew All about right, it. All right, let's move on. Anybody else besides Councilman Frazier have any additions or corrections to the minutes? All right, hearing none, we'll address those on Monday night. Next, uh, I, it's time for me to take uh, comments from the public regarding any non-agenda items. Does anyone want to make an comment on anything going on in and around town or uh, anything that doesn't appear on our agenda tonight.
Catherine Adelaide, 9 uh, Cortland Street. I'm not sure what you consider agenda here, but the, um, I am a witness that you did violate the Open Meetings Act and that these minutes are false, whatever they say. I'd like to know what's the date on the, uh, I did see the posting on the board that could have been put up a half hour before the meeting. There's no, and I took a picture of it, there's no date on that notice. So you ought to put dates that it's something is actually posted so the public knows when it's posted because reasonable, how do you determine reasonable if you didn't put the date on it? It could have been put up there. It's my uh, understanding it was published according to the guidelines of the state. This particular well, the guideline is not. reasonable notice, and if you don't know when it was posted, like I said, I saw it that afternoon. It could have been posted an hour before I happened to go by and see it. I was here on June 22nd. I attempted to observe the open portion of the meeting. Mr. Frazier, is, <laughs> Councilman Frazier is correct. You have to have an open meeting to close the meeting. You vote on it, and then you close it. That's, that's the way the, the law works, that's the part regardless that, of what he says. That's the part that the public can't be, but I stood at the door and was told by, I guess, Lisa, that it was a closed meeting, and I specifically asked her, there's no, no part of it that's open, and she said, no, that is outside of the law. You have to, um, I was denied entry to the building and I, to just to observe that part of the meeting that was open before it was closed to the public. There is a reason that the law requires an open meeting so that citizens can observe the open process of closing a meeting. It's, it's in there. Um, Ask her if she's been to law school. That's a rude thing to say to me. Ask her if did she's your been client, to law school. I'm Didn't curious, did your client waive privilege for you to read that letter? Because you seem to have concerns about privilege. I'm just curious. Comment, did everybody, not question. pardon? Comment, not question. Oh, okay. Well, I hope all the other people waived their privilege to that letter that was read uh, openly. But now that it has been, I hope you won't make any accusations of me about privilege um, because you've read it, you've read it outright. Anyway, um, the right to speak is not a privilege, it's actually a constitutional First Amendment right. So you're wrong about that. Um, clearly on the, you, it, I'm pretty sure all of you knew that Councilman Frazier was actually out of the country. So it was a very secret closed meeting and also no lawsuit was filed. The mere threat that he's a lawyer, because somebody hires a lawyer to protect their constitutional rights shouldn't turn into yet another venue for this council to attack a fellow councilman. Or to have secret meetings. Right, which was the point. And that what was so important about this, now I could see if a lawsuit had been filed and you had interrogatories due in 10 days and Councilman Frazier wasn't here, then you might have had a reason. But what was the big rush to have a closed meeting you had no right to exclude a sitting councilman from that. He had a right to actually to be there with his lawyer, just like anybody has a right to be there with their lawyer. So you had no right to exclude him. Seems like we're rehashing, rehashing. the same Please. thing yes. we just heard. Do you have anything new to say? Yeah, yes, I'm a witness to the fact that you broke the law. There wasn't reasonable notice. I don't know when that notice was posted. I attempted to observe the open part of the meeting to watch how a meeting would be closed. Because I've Catherine, never, are you a lawyer? I've never done are that you a before. Lawyer? Excuse me? Are you a lawyer? Are you? No. It's not a question session, sir. It's a comment session. And as far as you're concerned. But you're yeah. trying to act like one. No, I'm just, I'm just exercising my free speech right Because I have a daughter that is a lawyer. Rogerson, she passed the bar in two states. Rogerson was the next what highest vote getter, Maryland, not Mr. Ebal. Pennsylvania and West Virginia. Okay, continue, Rogerson continue was the next highest new. vote getter, not Mr. Ebal. Once again, Mayor, you said you were going to put the next highest vote getter into to this office. You're ignoring the people. You're ignoring the people's choice it was Dwayne Rogerson, not Mr. Ebal. He was he lost his seat for a reason. Uh, you rationalize the switcheroo by claiming that Mr. Ebal has more experience. Yes, he has more experience at keeping higher water rates in Tawny Town. Oh, Mr. Rogerson ran on a ticket to lower the water rates, an integrity I, I, issue I, because I, you I ought to have think deferred. Think we're reaching our time limit. You yeah. ought to have deferred your seat, Mr. Ebal. Four minutes and eleven seconds. So, Mr. Ebal, you should have deferred Let's hold your it to five seat. Minutes to Dwayne Rogerson. He was the next highest vote getter. And Mr. Mayor, you did not do the will of the people, the choice of the people. And you basically said one thing and did something else. So I think people should be aware of that. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else care to say anything? Yes. 
something new and different, so, not, not repeat not the same to. thing we've already heard. <laughs> I just wanted to, uh, I'm Robin Frazier from Bentley Street. Um, this was, this past month was tax paying month which is always difficult in the Fraser family. <laughs> and I just wanted to say that it occurred to me that my water bills, if I added up the four quarters, were more than my city taxes. And if anyone doesn't think that's outrageous, I can't imagine why not. My water bills, and, and they're not as high as a lot of people's are, were more than my city taxes. And uh, actually, on my rental property, they were more than twice as much as the, as the city taxes. So I still think we should be working on lowering that water bill. Anyone else care to make any comments on non-agenda items that's new and different? <coughs> we're hearing nothing. We'll move on then in the agenda. I need to ask the council members if there are any conflict of interest between any items on the agenda and their personal situations. Anybody have any conflict of interest on tonight's agenda? No. No, sir. No, no conflicts of interest. Okay. We'll be considering resolution 2016-26, the water allocation for August on Monday night. Anybody have any question on that resolution? None. We'll move down to... Um, the city manager's report. Henry, what do you have for us tonight? Well, the ENR project is winding down. Um, right now, the punch list is done. Uh, we're, uh, we've got two pieces of equipment that Evoca is going to be sending in at no cost to us. We are going to uh, have a closing meeting very shortly where we we'll close the project out. So that project is coming very near to a completion. And the water billing system, you all have in front of you uh, the bids and the recommendations for uh, purchasing the, the, or the upgrade to the, uh, um, oh, I'm sorry, pardon me. We're, you know, the water billing system, we're still in progress with that. There, the, the data has been converted at the moment, and uh, we should be moving forward that very soon. Uh, the MIA grant is complete, and, and we're looking for a, additional funds for uh, another lightning project. Um, now we move to the IT portion of the thing. You have before you the, the bids for the upgrade to our, uh, um, our website, and you have been provided with a recommendation we'll by the deciding on that IT. Monday night also. I'm sorry. We'll be voting on that Monday night. Exactly, yes. Um, last month we talked about the um, water billing credits. Uh, the credits are being applied and will be reflected in the next quarter's billing. The, uh, we're still working on the capital projects and capital equipment. Now, I'm just going to make a real note. I don't want to steal too much thunder from the mayor, but last night we had uh, National Night Out which was very successful. But I want to talk about the, the project or the, the, the thing that was the most successful last <coughs> night, and that is the CHIP program. Now, the CHIP program is basically a, um, a means of identification child. What they do is they come in, they take pictures, they take fingerprints, they take DNA samples, and give that to the parents. At no time do the, 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 the information goes to the parents no data, no data is collected or saved. And there, we were there last night till 9.30, and it, it was, was over. A, it was a full room all evening, too. Right. It so was. It was very good. And that concludes my report. Can I ask a question about the report? There's Certainly. one thing I have. The first item, which says ENR upgrade, you have under notes um, 6.5 M. Is that the total? Um, Expenditure or the total budget? That's the total project, $6.5 million. You spent that much on it, or is that the budget amount? That, I don't know the final cost, but that's the projected cost. We'll get that at the final meeting, closeout meeting. And when, it, when is that set for, the final closeout? We don't meeting? have that set yet. Um, I mean, approximately, you have an idea? Uh, 
within the next 90 days. Okay, thank you so much. All right, anybody else have any questions for Henry on his report? Anybody have any questions on the departmental reports? I think I had a couple of questions. One question had to do with well 17. It seems like we drew down well 17 much more than the other wells and much more than in yes. past history. Is there yes. any particular reason for that? Um, yeah, I was told, but quite frankly, I've, I've kind of forgotten at the moment. I, I can get that for you by Monday. I noticed that myself. Um, and the only other question I had was that I noticed the planning and zoning meeting we discussed, um, a county liaison discussed the um, bicycle pedestrian master plan and mentioned they'd like to speak with uh, city staff to discuss the plan. Is there any been anything formalized on that? Is that, is that in progress or in anything happening on that? That's all. Nothing has been formalized at the, at the moment. Okay. I'd be interested to see what they have in mind. Okay. All right, let's uh, move on to the legal report. Jay, what do you have for us? Tonight? Mr. Mayor, we have two items tonight. The first one is this was in your package. It's the quarterly financial disclosure form. So we'll start with ethics. The Ethics Commission met last week to uh, have two items of business dealt with. The first was to review the financial disclosure form of Councilman Ebal prior to him taking office. And that was reviewed and approved. And then they finally came up with a form. As you recall, several months ago, they said they wanted you all to fill out a quarterly form, not just you all, but everyone who has to fill out an ethics financial disclosure form. And uh, they hadn't agreed on what it would be. So you have a copy in your, uh, your folder of what it's going to be. They've approved this form. Obviously, we're behind by two quarters, so what's going to happen is a letter is going to go out with this form to everyone, including you all, and give the deadline for September 30th to fill it back in. So that way, at least we're caught up with quarter number three, and then there'll be quarter number four, and then you'll get your forms to fill out at the beginning of the year. So um, it's pretty straightforward. <coughs> we're basically certifying you don't have any changes. If you have changes, you need to fill out a regular form, and that's what the law basically says now. So that's the, the word on the Ethics Commission. They're going to be meeting again in the near future to deal with uh, the financial disclosure forms, the election candidates' uh, financial disclosure forms, and the campaign contribution forms. Any questions on that? Questions on the financial disclosure? Okay, the second item we have is the referendum petition. Uh, I really have to hand it to uh, the city clerk. Clara did a really yeoman's job to get this petition validated and verified and it took a lot of time Clara was the the point but Henry and the office staff really had to give a lot of extra time to make this happen and you can talk to them about what was involved what you have uh, sitting on your table because it was just completed is basically on city letterhead a document entitled petition verification verification report and I want to go through that with you so that you can see how to read it and see what information it contains, and then you can take it with you to study. And then there's another memo in front of you as well related to it. If you look at the report that's in front of you, basically it gives the background. You all understand the background that uh, you passed a resolution. The state law allows that resolution to be taken to referendum if a petition is received that contains 20% or more of the registered voters within 40 days from the day you pass it. So that's basically the first part of the the issue. I'm not going to read it word for word, but a petition was received containing 233 pages with 1,126 entries. There was an additional package which was pertaining to the petition received by certified mail on May 23rd. That package was not counted and was not reviewed because it was received after the 40-day mark. The next section is the applicable law in the situation, and the applicable law talks about section 4-304 of the Maryland General Assembly Code. And you can say it just basically states what I told you so far, as far as the 40th day, the 50th day, the 
basically the important part about this when we lead to the next paragraph is what's involved with the verification. And the verification has basically three elements. It has to make sure that the person that signed the petition is a registered voter for the town. It has to make sure they actually sign their name and it has to make sure their name and address is there. So the three elements are the signature, the fact that they're a registered voter and that their name and address are present. The next section I've broken out for tabulations to make it very simple for you all. There's three tabulations that had to be done to make this. It's like a mathematical process. The first is the time tabulation. The charter was adopted, the resolution was adopted on April 11th. 40 days from that day is May 21st. So that sets the deadline for the petition. The petition was received on May 20th. So the petition with 1,126 names uh, or entries was received in time. The next tabulation is the voter registration list. The voter registration list, and I have a copy of it here, you can see it's a, a massive document. The voter registration list is obtained from the Carroll County Board of Elections. They're responsible for all voter registrations under the uniform registration. We don't maintain our own registration list. So they were contacted. The list that was used was provided was dated May 13th. That was the latest one they had. Everybody had already registered for the primaries and it shows that there were 4,294 individuals within the boundary of the city Tawny Town registered to vote. So that's your first number. 20% of 4,294 is 858.8, .8, rounded to the nearest whole number is 859. So the petition needed to contain 859 or more signatures to make sure it had 20%. That's the second tabulation. The third tabulation was the most arduous. It was actually the petition itself. The facts on the petition, it contained 233 pages with 1,126 entries in a format that basically had five spaces for the required information. I've told you what that was already per page. However, you can't take five times 233 because some pages did not have all five entries contained in there. The verification process started like this, so you can see what everyone did. They took the, the clerk's office, took the petition, and then sequentially numbered every signature. So. Page one, entry one was one, and sequentially numbered every signature so that every signature has its own unique, unique number so that you can track that at that point in time. After that, they made sure that everything was legible. If their signature was not legible, if there was an incomplete address, if there was anything that missed some of those items, those were not counted in the tabulation. They re still received their own number, but they were not counted in the tabulation. After that, the next step was to match the names on the petition with the voter registration list. Voter registration is an alphanumeric order. The names on the petition obviously aren't, so it's a task of folding and back and forth and back and forth. Anybody that did not appear on the voter registration list still has their own assigned number, but was not counted in the tabulation. This is also where duplicates were picked up, where people would have signed on different pages of the petition. You could pick it up at that point in time the duplicate entry was not counted, meaning the initial entry was, but a duplicate of that entry was not counted. The next page, you can actually see the math, the verification results. So you do the math this way. There were total number of entries of 1,126. The entry is not tabulated, and each one of these categories has a, an appendix, so you can see the actual names that were not tabulated, or some of them aren't names, but you'll understand in a second. So the entries not tabulated were those not registered to vote, 79. So out of 1,126, 79 were not registered to vote and were not counted. Entries of those not residing in the city limits, 49. They were not counted. Entries that did not contain a, an address, 2. Entries that did not contain a signature, 2. Entries from which there were duplicates, 11. Entries for which illegible names, 2. So the total number of not counted entries out of the 1,126 is 145, so the net number of entries is 981. 981 represents 22.85% of the registered, registered voters in the municipal general election. The following pages are your appendices that support the numbers that were in there. So based on the verification of the clerk's office, the petition that you received has 22% of the registered voters, therefore qualifies under that. I know there's been much discussion every month about wanting to review this, and so the plan I have outlined for you in my memo, which was a setting on your page, of what do you do next? I'm sure you're wanting to know, what do we do with this? You need to take your form and you need to review it. 
make sure that you're okay with it. Um, and okay with it means do you have any questions? Do you understand how the city clerk's office did it? If you'd like access to the voter registration forms, if you have access to the petition to see those things, just contact me and that can be arranged. Once you're comfortable with that, the next step under the state law is a resolution needs to be introduced. And so the understanding is the resolution will probably be ready for introduction in September, since it's August already. And that resolution has certain key elements in it. What I'm envisioning for the September resolution is the resolution format with uh, kind of like an A or B choice. So everything's laid out there for your understanding and you can choose do you want to do this or want to do that. Here are your choices. The first part is you introduce the resolution and it has to state the date and the hours for the election. Okay, those are the two things you get to choose, a date and the hours. The second thing you get to choose is the exact language that has to be on there. So the exact language that's going to be on the, register, on the referendum question must be on that resolution as well. The election. You get two choices. You can hold the election at the next municipal general election, so that would be May of 2017, or you can hold a special election. So if you're holding it next May 2017, we know what the hours are, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. If you decide to hold a special election, you can dictate what the hours are. There's only one other parameter that you have to follow, is if you decide to hold a special election, it has to occur no sooner than 40 days after you pass that resolution and no later than 60 days after you pass the resolution. So you have basically a 20-day window. All the rest of the election laws of the city apply, which means the advertising, the board of elections, the clerk runs the elections, everything else that we normally do would be done. So for September, assuming that that's ready, you're ready to move ahead, you'll have a resolution, you'll have some language that we'll put together for you to review, decide how you wanna see it on there. You'll decide whether you wanna have it at the next general election. We'll give you that date, but it's when the next general election for the city is. Or whether you wanna have a special election and then the assumption would be if you pass it at September, we'll count out 40 days and 60 days and say this is when it's going to be. If you don't pass it in September, we'll count out 40 to 60 days from October. And if you don't do it from then, we'll figure something out after that. So that's basically the procedure that was went through. I can't state enough of how proud I am of the work that the office did. Um, this was very important despite the rhetoric that's been thrown around important to everybody that touched this because everybody that was involved took time to put their name on this one way or the other. And it was important for us to have it work out exactly. And when I say work out exactly, that seems like an easy thing. But you take these signatures that you can't read and you come up with a list and then you match them to the voter registration list, it's like a balance sheet with money. You should be able to count the number here and count the number here and they should match. Well, you can see when you have a checkbook, how many times have you lost the one or two cents that you have to go back and find and find Amen. and find. That's right? difficult. Well, that's the way this was, except with a thousand pages, a thousand entries that you had to deal with. And you know, I really can't pat the girls up front, but Clara was the, the yeoman on this to make this happen. This is the first time that we've dealt one since I've been with your attorney. And um, there are certain procedures that we need to improve upon to make sure that um, this petition right, which is in the state law, uh, is something that we can deal with perhaps on a more expedited basis, but it took us a while to make this happen. Questions? Yeah, I have a question. Um, it says here on the first page of your submission tonight that if you choose to hold a special election, it must occur between 40 and 60 days after you pass the resolution. My understanding of the law, and you can maybe speak to this, is that the law says that no staff can determine acceptance of the petition, whether it fails or, or whether it uh, goes forward. So um, I would suggest to the mayor that a vote be taken, once we got the staff report tonight, Monday, whether to accept this uh, report of staff or not, because the, uh, the, uh, the law requires that this body decides, not the staff, whether or not this petition uh, has met muster or not. The legislative body must determine whether or not, because the petition is submitted, Mr. Mayor, to the legislative body. So I would encourage you to put on the agenda for Monday, accepting the report 
here. So this is, uh, as we've received, I think, a very ably done report. I'd also like to thank the hundreds of hours of people who walked door to door because they're concerned about violating the United States Constitution. That, that, uh, that idea is, has some merit to it. However, I don't think Monday would probably be the appropriate time. You're not willing to stand behind this report? 100%. That's not the issue. The issue is... And why wouldn't we follow I'll, the law and, and nobody, ratify it with a simple majority vote? I vote er, everything, yes. Is, everything let, is let a battle the with you. Let answer the question. Yes, answer the question. No, everything is a battle here. The issue is perhaps you all would like an opportunity to go through this and compare it to the petition because all I've heard for the last two months was the staff shouldn't be doing this. You all should be doing it. So I just thought it should be done openly, that's all. It was done in secret, that's yeah, all. Yeah, I know, and that's, that's not correct as well. Well, the way you said it was that I disagreed with what you were doing. I don't disagree with what you're doing. I disagree that nobody in town can see what you're doing. Right here is the report, <laughs> and that <laughs> is all the I point. And I guess that was my point in, in addressing well, Councilman if, Frazier, if, was that there's no point in voting on it on Monday since you all haven't had the opportunity to go through it. And all we have heard for two months is everybody should be seeing what we're doing. So the Amen. idea would be that's right. you what, should what, wait till next month to do it. Let's just, let's just frame what we've done here. We've had staff tabulate these results. You have invited council to contact you if they had any questions or were, wanted to look at the, the actual numbers themselves. So we have that opportunity to do that. Right. Now, can we do that between now and Monday? That's maybe not practical, but I guess it could possibly happen. <laughs> so what you're saying will occur. I mean, there's yeah, never any just, doubt that the council would, would make the, uh, the motion to move forward with this special election, if that's what they choose to do. And uh, the only thing that needs to be satisfied is any curiosity that any council member might have. Sure. So if you want to look at the numbers directly with, with Jay, he was, he'll welcome you to come over and take a look at them. Or if Carl, since he's new to the council today, would like to get more involved in it and find the, dig deeper into what we have here, <laughs> then, he, then he certainly can do that. But, but to, to assume that we can get all this done by Monday might be a little bit optimistic. No, my point was this. Uh, Jim, uh, my point was this. The law of, of how you do these petitions requires that the legislative body ex either accept the petition to go forward or it fails for lack of meeting muster. Well, and we've just received an able report that says that we are not only over by, the citizens of the well, town if, are if not someone, only over by just a, a vote or two. But the, the issue, if someone, someone said, I'm not so, comfortable with the numbers that have been presented to me. Well, I'm not particularly I wanna, comfortable. I want to see it for myself. Well, what would you tell that person? Well, I would answer that question this way. Uh, when I mail my tax return, I can drive the Baltimore City Post Office and it's postmarked by the date that I postmark it, then it's counted as on time. I just had a situation where the 31st fell on Sunday and I was given till Monday in order to, to do my business with the government. The same is true with this group of additional signatures that were rejected by the town. Well, well isn't, isn't the question mute? I mean, yeah. the fact that the 22 percent of the voters... I just asked the question so the people would note that you didn't follow the law. Does it make any difference oh, whatsoever? <laughs> just the fact that you'd like to argue about it. Jay, can I ask a question? If we vote to accept the petition, can that be done on the same night that we would vote on a resolution about an election? That's, that's correct. That, that was my point. For once, we were on the same side saying that a vote should actually be taken, but I thought you'd want some time to go through it, and that would yeah. be okay. the time. Councilman Vigliotti, right. because of the 40 to 60 day requirement for a special election, the vote to ratify should be separate from a resolution on how to do the election. It's my opinion that I should move on Monday to uh, accept the report of staff, and I hope you'll vote with me when I do so on and Monday. If I may ask, why Monday? Is, is your intention to kickstart the 40 to 60 day? The clock doesn't start ticking until the resolution's approved. Right. Well, I guess, I guess the reason is twofold. Uh, first, uh, the day September was written, that it take the staff so long until September to do that. I think that it is, uh, it is a good report and okay. carefully done. Okay. And I thank the staff for the time to do it. And I think that there's no reason 
to dispute it because there's another block of signatures that illegally was not counted that will put us over far over. Everyone should be convinced. Donald, you got what you uh, wanted. Do we have to keep going over this? I'm gonna, I'm we have other you. items. Can I speak today. to that, Mr. Mayor? You've been speaking for almost well, an hour. Can I speak to his point? You, I, you, I just, the Don, reason is. You can make you any question. motion you'd like on Monday night. I will. And if you get a second, we'll vote on it. I'll I call it to a vote. <laughs> That's the way it goes, isn't okay. it? You Mr. don't have the votes, you don't have the votes. Mr. I, Mayor. <laughs> I, Mr. Mayor. Yes. I'd like an answer on my question. Well, I was trying to address uh, Councilman Ebel. Okay. He asked me a question. Right. He asked but, me a specific question. Right. And I asked you one beforehand that hasn't been answered yet. I didn't hear that. But I'm on sorry. Monday, Please by you me. making the motion, are you intending to start the clock on the 40 to 60 days? Is that your intention? No, it just it says if you choose a special election, it must occur. So right. the choice for the special election can be when he gets around to writing a resolution on whether to go to the May election or whether. Right. And the started. resolution will be accepting all of this. I just think that it's unwise and not consistent with the law because before this was done, a lot of work was put in to how there were lots of people that looked at the law that allows certain things like charter amendments to be petitioned, referendum to protect the rights of the citizen. And, so, and I, uh, I agree. So the law says that the ratification is a different part than how you conduct the okay. election. Here's, that's why here's where I'm coming from with this. To, to here's where I'm coming to, from, and, and let's look at it fairly. Does that answer your question? It, it does, okay. to a certain extent, except for the yes or no part of it, but that's okay. What I'm thinking is... I just we're trying to the, follow the law, not just okay. kick start anything. That's, that's great, that's great. <laughs> Those who put together the petition, which is admirable to get over 1,100 names, that's, that's admirable, had... 40 days to collect those. It went to the city who had several weeks that they had to go through all of this and they poured over it. We, great. And they did a great job. We get this on Wednesday and you want us to have five days to decide whether to accept this. You're not comfortable with the work they did? I'm not saying that, but I'd like to actually sit at home and, and maybe if this were in my packet, that'd be great. But there's one on here, I already have a question. How about the, all, the information I offered at the beginning of this colloquy, which was a group of signatures in excess, I think, of 100, uh, maybe 89 to 100, uh, were, uh, would be counted if this was challenged. But, so but, you not only have right. met by hundreds That's, of citizens, but there's another group, and that should even convince you more, to unre go ahead and ratify Unrelated to what I'm saying. That's certainly related. It's in persuading you to vote yes on Monday. Okay. Well, by rushing me on something that they had more time to work on is unfair. The council Why? as a whole, yeah. by Why? rushing us to make this decision Why? in five days. You put such great emphasis on this. Now maybe we want Why is the that? same emphasis, Don. Why is that wrong? Maybe I'm we not, want the same. Can you I'm not asking for 40 days to look through it. I just, I already see a couple things I have questions on. And you're limiting me to five days to do my own digging. Not, look, I'm happy with this. You have enough signatures, great. That's not my drive, I, I did sign it. Make your motion if you'd like on Monday, but I think you're being unfair to the rest of the council no, by expecting No, I just that. have great confidence the staff did exactly what- I think uh, they did a great that job. Attorney Gullo said. All right. This was a lengthy process of ratification, Mr. Mayor. Anyone and we else? are clearly way over the number required for you any, to anybody have else have any questions? Put for this on the May ballot. Just yeah, one point of clarification here, Councilman Frazier, you've spoken about the excellent job that the city staff did in putting together this report, but then you charged a few minutes beforehand that signatures were illegally rejected because they were received after the date. Is that correct? Yeah, that's what he said. Right, and and, and could, I also you... disagree with the fact that we repeatedly ask, I ask, and others ask, can we be present? As you reviewed, that's a different we were issue. Denied the right to do that. These are things, you know. It's like Monday morning quarterback. How to be a better government? How to be a better government is not be a secret, closed government. And the question that I have, Jay, is could you go into a little more detail about the signatures that that were rejected after the date, so we can better understand the, that? The the fact pattern was, uh, I can get you the exact date, but the fortieth day was the. 22nd, or uh, the 40th day was the 21st of May. 
which was a Saturday. On the 20th, the bulk of the signatures, the 1,126, were presented. They were presented at the front office, they were signed for, they were stamped, everything the way the procedure was supposed to be outlined, the way internal procedures were followed. <coughs> On Monday, we received a package that had more sheets in it. That package was never reviewed and never counted because the law is very clear. It needs to be delivered by the 40th day. Well, can I ask a follow-up, Mr. Mayor? And postmarking does not count as delivering. The delivering. It does for my tax return. Why doesn't it count for Because this is not a tax return. And so here's the situation that I'll pose to you, which will just, just hypothetically. Why didn't you mail them all? Yes. I the have, second question I can is. That. May I answer that? The, the second question that I have for you is if you believe this body is the body that's supposed to receive it. Not, no, I didn't say that. I said the law says that. Okay. If that's what that's the law says, okay, well then <laughs> maybe I'll want to follow your legal advice because then none of the signatures are valid because you all never got them by the 40th day. But you delivered them to the administrative office and thought that was good enough because that's the way the law reads is that is good enough and the administrative office handles it. No. Otherwise, you would have need to deliver it no, to this body. Days. You must go to school to be <laughs> deceitful like that. Well, the, I went to law school. The, the, we have this ability to hire staff to execute all of our functions. Why did which, you which, say that? Which is my point exactly, is that the staff <laughs> has done this work. And, and I guess that's the issue back to Councilman Vigliotti is that the delivery in the same method to the same place, it says delivered by the 40th day, not postmarked by the 40th day. It specifically goes on to say how you can get something delivered, either in person oh. or by certified mail. Yeah. But it does not say postmarked by that day. It says delivered. Now, the issue that we're talking about has wasted enough time for us because no, that question <laughs> is moot. Yes. It is moot once the signatures were reached. Right. The reason no, it, it, you to know, answer the question he asked me we, that we, we we're, we're wasting time talking it's about not that. a waste of time. The public needs to know. Oh, what no, was no, done. It's, it's very much a waste of time. If the if we didn't qualify the signatures without those, then maybe we could talk about it. But since we did, it didn't make any difference. You don't have to bang the gavel because the fact is he you know, directly this, challenged this whole, the question to me. In, in my opinion. Why? In the why opinion, is because in the first this time whole in the petition history of process Tony has Pan been has been as, as typical has been rent with deception and misinformation. That's not talking. And it's important <laughs> to know it's important to know that the signatures that were verified were verified in a, in a true and a, in an honest and in an appropriate way. We've got those signatures. We'll move forward to the referendum for the, the referendum election. And that's all that's important. At the risk of whether whether bogus signatures were received on Monday or they were not bogus signatures received on Monday doesn't make any difference. The fact that they were received on Monday makes them bogus. They weren't they weren't in accordance with the den deadline. Uh, it, All right. In answer to your, your question, Mr. Mayor, at the risk of not uh, addressing the question directly to me to my, Mr. Gullard, is, is that uh, the, uh, the, uh, the issue here is whether or not you can accept your staff's report on Monday. That's all I said. We should accept this report on well, Monday. Again, we the, don't have to rehash the, why the, the council, town opened the for the first time vote, in my memory on a Saturday has, to truncate exactly the 40 right. days. It's up to the council to accept and the report. why a felony occurred in the theft of a sign. If, we if don't you have want to, to make a motion things. on Monday night to have ask the council to accept the report, you can put it up for a vote I'd and see what happens. I encourage you all to vote. If the council feels like they haven't had enough time to discern whether the <laughs> numbers presented to us are true or not, then they'll vote it down. If they think they have had enough time, then they'll approve it. So why are we continuing to talk about this? We've got an agenda to complete. That's I, all there is to it. Mayor, there's one last thing I'd like to say. Monday was the deadline. Quick, if I might. <laughs> well, actually, to that point, uh, Councilman, if I remember correctly, you guys were hoping that the city offices were going to be open on Saturday so that the petition could be delivered. Oh, I don't recall that. Why do you say that? 
because I spoke to somebody who was happy that the city hall was going to be open to receive the petitions on Saturday. Well, we were going to have a booth at the big flea market, but it rained out. So we well, got what was more important? Two or three hundred signatures on Saturday. But the, because people are furious at the city council of Tony Town for, um, for trying to kick off a member that wants to lower water bill. <laughs> No one's trying to kick anybody off. And, and the point that I want to make really quick is I've been on council now for a little more than three years, and in all that time, you know, Jay keeps being challenged for the legal advice that he's given. I've never been in a situation where Jay has steered us wrong about anything. You know, I, I've never been to law school. I, I can't even, you know, wouldn't even presume to imagine to, to debate Jay on anything that had to do anything with legality in any way, shape, or form. And that's why I, you know, I place my trust in him. And he's never let me down in three and a half years. And if we're going to be knocking Jay about the legal advice that he gives, and I'm certainly going to compliment him about the legal advice that he gives. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Anyone else have any comments regarding the legal report? All right, let's move into new business. We have the monthly financial report. Does anyone have any questions on the monthly financial report? Hearing none, how about the accounts payable? Does anyone have any questions on the accounts payable? I do. I would like to say that, again, there is another invoice for legal services for $20,000 for an outside contractor. $20,000 additional dollars. I tried to do a calculation is, is on how many, hours, for, for three how many hours of work to earn $20,000. And uh, I came up with a, not very many hours. So I'm going to vote against the allocation of this. I think that other towns in Carroll County do not have an attorney that comes to every planning commission and every meeting of every ethics commission and every council meeting. All the attorneys I met at MACO, they represent multiple towns, and they're only called on when we have legal disputes. And so I'm appalled that this large numbers of money are going on to outside contractor for a... Uh, are you complaining about Jay's bills? I'm going to vote against the twenty thousand dollars that did was spent. Did you notice it was for three months? I did. I was going to vote great. against it last month because it wasn't on here. That's great. I, I was thinking about filing a freedom of information Again, it's a, request because I know he's getting fortune that he for makes this. when he makes his speeches. Yeah. He tries to mislead people. Thinking it's it's, it's right things now. like this right now it's, tonight. It's we have delayed month, this and delayed months. this for a, an hour. We're paying him that's, that's, for this hour. He should be. We paid all our. Uh, staff downstairs, how many, who knows how many hours well, I'm a to count your thingies. I'm a conservative. I wouldn't vote to have the attorney president. Now, you want to lower the water rate. Let's cut the other rates, too. Okay? No, I just, it, in order to address you That's on that question, uh, we don't need legal advice. Many times I've been on the council now. You don't, bit. maybe, but we do. Oh. <laughs> yes. Well. All righty, let's move on. Any other new business that anybody can think of that we need to include in that? Actually, I have a question, maybe an idea. I'm not, I'm not quite sure how this would work, and, and certainly if, if I err in, in stating this, somebody please do correct me. But with the, and I, I guess maybe this is probably the best time to bring it up, with the damage that Ellicott City received with the flooding that they endured, is there a way that we as the city and you know, the administration and the people of Tawnytown can donate money or, or do something for them in some respect to, to, I don't know, maybe offer some kind of a declaration of support or something to, to assist them in, in their troubles. Because I know that, that, you know, if our town was faced with some similar situation, that other towns would certainly come to our aid. You know, I Main know, I know that in past, that. I know that in past times when disasters have hit towns, we have been, municipalities have made themselves available with work crews and, and um, help of different kinds. It's perhaps, even though Ellicott City is not a municipality, <coughs> maybe that kind of help could be offered if we can spare it. I don't know. Maybe that's something we need to do is, is contact the people in charge of the cleanup and see if they can use anything that we have. That would be controlled by the incident commander who's on site. And, you know, sure, we, we can make contact and ask and see what if I, they I think it would right be. Right now, from what I I've think heard, it would be appropriate and neighborly to right. uh, offer. And they, they may not accept anything. One of the things that they've, they've been talking about based on television is what they need most of all is money. 
Also, well, Main I, Street I, I is making um, an effort to offer some support. They haven't decided what yet, but Main Street and the businesses are addressing it as well and because I, that is a Main Street. Yeah. I'm particularly aware of the of the effort that the municipalities put together to support La Plata when the tornado came through several years ago. And it just seems like that's something we should do if we can, that's all. But we need to find out if, if it's needed. It, you know, they may have more more help than they can stand. Yeah. But if I remember La Plata, I think that was coordinated through MML. Do you, do you remember that? All right. Old business discusses the ordinance for the electronic board. What uh, more do we have to say about that? You had suggested we defer the discussion of yes. the sign that was just purchased to this portion of the meeting. May I speak about that? So you wanted to make a point that the square footage of the New board is the same si same square footage. The display footage area is exactly the same size as the current board. As that the, information is so important to people who have been frightened with misinformation about this sign. I, I have spoken to. That makes me of, feel better. I'll put it that way. Yeah, there's some a big thing that says Tony Town thing on the top, and maybe the zone, playing the zoning commission would count all that perfing, but it's a beautiful piece of work. It's a good price, and it's a it's a 21st century piece of technology needed by our coaches. Um, they have approached me recently at the uh, at a recent event, the Carroll County uh, gathering, to say that they want to be able to put up messages like, "When our teams do well," and it will help them in the fundraising. And they're just so excited that we that you did the wise thing, Mr. Mayor, breaking that tie vote last month. Thank you for doing that. It's visionary and correct that you did that. Well, we, have, we, have we made any progress, Brad, on restructuring our ordinance to allow this? I understand the last, my last, my last understanding was didn't comply with our sign ordinance. And we needed to adjust it because it's in a different area than is allowed. There where is, we where we stand on that is it was discussed at length at the last Planning Commission meeting. Um, there are a few options that we've looked into as to how we're going to redo the signed ordinance, um, allowing the signs. And, and it's not the city sign that we're looking at necessarily. It's these signs around the city as a whole for businesses, for uh, civil organizations, schools, things like that. And, and that's the broad scope here is we, we keep getting tunnel vision on the city wants to sign, let's make it work. Mm -hmm there's the whole city that we need to consider and that's what we're doing right now um, as to what path we're going to take we're undecided at the moment the one thing that, that did come out of the planning commission is they asked that the city respect the current code in terms of what is and is not allowed until this is ironed out and the reason we say that is this the city can do whatever they want the code doesn't apply to the city they can put it up and walk away happy. The Planning Commission simply asks that they respect the code until the changes are completed and then it be put up in accordance with that code. Now what are we supposed to do? I understand the sign was supposed to be in this week, last week. Well, no, the sign's not going to be, they're not taking delivery until all of this is resolved. So it's... The problem there is going to be the, the sign is done. Correct. We're going to expect the vendor to hold that sign and we not pay? If I, if I may speak to that, we've been in contact with the vendor and their contract with them says that we pay 50% and another 50% when, when it's completed. They understand the, the situation and they're willing to wait. So they would be okay and I, with that. And I do believe that in the last, last month when the, the motion was made, it was made in light of the fact that we would wait. So we're, right. we're honoring the planning and zoning. Right. Okay. And we appreciate that. We wanted to make that known to the council that that's what that we hope to happen. All right. And we are making progress on it. Um, may I ask a question? All right, very good, yes. Uh, would you, Councilman Ebal, agree with me that uh, since this has been in the budget for a whole year, that if we made a motion to pay this vendor, 
that, and take delivery, that would be a good thing? Well, I think Henry just answered that for us. We, we would, you, uh, would you would you second a motion to go ahead and take delivery? Because no, I we're, wouldn't second it. We are, I think we made a motion last, last, last month, last month to delivery. was to buy it and pay for it, but not take delivery of it, and that was bizarre. I thought, and it was but not fair to the vendor. If they're satisfied, then I'm satisfied. Well, there's the other issue is you know uh, we can't really pay off pay the bill until it is completed and installed. Yeah. So uh, that's a technicality of the contract, but basically they're willing to take the 50%, which we will send to them, and they understand the situation as far as the ordinance, and they won't deliver until that's, that's yeah. satisfied. Well, that makes, that, that, that's, yeah, that's great. It, that's Mr. Reasonable. And are you going to do that? You're going to pay that 50% now that we've ordered? Okay. Mr. Sure. Mayor, that's good. if I can say one more thing about this, and the whole reason it's even become a hot topic is that there were what I seem to see as a breakdown of communication when all this went down in terms of department heads communicating with each other, <coughs> realizing at the last second, oh, well, we can't even put it up, and you're nearing the end of a budget year, and it has to be bought, and it has to be this, it has to be that. There needs to be better processes in place so that these things are taken care of well in advance. Instead of coming down to the 11th hour, or in this case, the 13th hour, to get this resolved. And that's why it becomes such a hot topic right now. Well, Councilman Wance, can I ask a question? I would Councilman love it. Go ahead. Yes. We had talked between the meetings about mm -hmm. the accusation that's been made against this particularly beneficial sign uh, about it being unfair because potentially other applicants had been shunned or denied at a previous time. I had made a suggestion to be brought up at the, hopefully at the planning commission meeting, I should have done it, that we um, adopt a quick ordinance for gateways. We have four wonderful right. gateways to advertise our city. And I don't think the sign that restricts, has restricted in the past these other potential applicants is a fair criticism of this particular sign because it's a gateway sign. Well, so actually, did you for a, I did. A pursue that with the what did they think? I did. That? It was determined that it is not a gateway sign, and that was determined by the uh, Parks and Rec director, who said it is not a gateway sign, and it was agreed upon the Planning Commission that that would not qualify as a gateway sign. Well, the city limits is just beyond it. I understand. But the intent of the sign was not that it be a gateway, that it would be a sign for the well, park. I think that you can give an excuse for the little bit of uh, decorative because it has the effect of, of welcoming folks to town from the north. I thought that was splendidly done. Okay. Well, I did bring that up, and I, I thought it was a great it. idea. You and I had a great conversation I that day. And, I thought um, it was a good idea. <laughs> and I did take it forward, unfortunately, that, that just didn't pass. Thank you. It's important to do things correctly. Um, oh, business. Next, I'll entertain any public comment pertaining to uh, agenda I an old business. I have an old business item. While we were on old business there? When I, did, did we miss I, something uh, on old business? I spoke to Mr. Atherton, and he has not received the check for $139.99. And I'm going to make another motion on Monday. I, I couldn't believe you all wouldn't pay this man. He's waited six months to get the money he's duly owed. Mm. And I couldn't believe I was voted down last meeting. So I'm going to make a motion I just, uh, on Monday to give Mr. Atherton his money. I'm wondering of this group of people, how many other people have been forced to wait for six months for the clarification of this money because their batteries were allowed to be dead and estimates were made. It's a scandal. I think it should be put behind us by paying these bills. Did you not listen to my report? I did. I was going to interrupt you and say, how about Mr. Athen? Why didn't you pay him? Like did, I not say that, <laughs> did I not say in previous meetings that we're not going to cut checks? Cutting checks. We don't cut checks. We are applying credits, and that all the credits will be applied by the next quarter. I billing. think it's disgusting that you make $91,000 a year, and we can't pay a man $139.99. We voted him for six months. That's why I keep bringing it up. Oh, really? Yes. Are you jealous of him? No, I'm saying thinks? that's an injustice, and it cries out from this room to everyone who was ripped off for the dead battery situation. You, Donald. 
Hey, well, um, there's one other, there's something I do want to interrupt to say here. Sewer bill reduced by the amount of crap. He's been, I have a list of the email conversations of Mr. <coughs> Atherton to town staff, and it's about that thick. Mr. Atherton's credit has been applied, and he will see it at the next billing. Why don't we drop him a note and let him know that? Just okay. Yeah. There's one other thing that's briefly got to be said about, you know, the delay in figuring out these bills. I want to remind everybody that Councilman Wands volunteered, took it upon himself to do this alone, to, to start figuring everything out. And you shouldn't criticize the fact that he's the only person who's volunteered. You criticize anybody? You did a few minutes ago. You were criticizing the amount of time that... I Grants, Mr. Wants, for working so hard on this package of, of problems. And a few minutes ago, you just criticized the amount of time it was taking to get the bills figured out from the estimate. No, just meetings. that you voted me down when he clearly is owed the money and he's worked so hard to get it. No one argued with the fact that he's, Why he's owed a credit. And it's that? being dispensed to him. It's going to be dispensed to him. We're, we'll notify Mr. Atherton of his credit. Good. That he's, he'd email me today. I could read the email saying, I haven't heard a word. That's what he told me. All right. Um, any other old business? Actually, I'd like to speak to that real quick, if I could, Mr. Mayor. Sure. I shared with the council the progress of that. When you received an email from the gentleman that he had not heard a word, I your response right could have been, I'm sorry, I did hear that it was submitted to the staff and they're taking care of it. it here's his email. I don't want to hear his email. <laughs> okay. It's, I don't. It's at 446, Wednesday, August the 3rd. And here it's, it is. It's open for public view if anybody wants to see it. <laughs> if I were him, I'd be pretty enraged about it. Continue, Mr. Mayor. All right. Thank you. Now I'll take public comment pertaining to any agenda items. Does anyone have anything to say about the items that have been on the agenda this evening? Marvin, let's go let Marvin go first. He hasn't spoken yet. Oh, go ahead, Catherine. All right, he's, he's giving you the floor, Catherine. Thank you, gentlemen. Catherine Adelaide, 9 Cortland Street. That's why they say it's the city council meeting is more fun to watch than TV. Um, as the contact, the official contact for the referendum petition, um, obviously we're happy that the petition has passed, but um, personally I do feel disrespected that I put several requests in to be notified about it and I've received nothing. I do think that, again, I'm here as a citizen and this let, referendum let me, let me petition right there. I, is, this, this is a point that was brought to my attention. And I just want a clarification. Do we have any responsibility to notice, notify anybody about this? No, there, there's, two, there's three issues that deal with this. The first issue is, why would anyone in the public get to see the report before you all got to see the report? That's the first thing. It's been pot argued already tonight. This is your responsibility, and we were doing the legwork. So that's number one. Number two, the committee that Ms. Adelaide says she is the president of or in charge of is represented by council. And so even if we were going to communicate with you, we wouldn't communicate directly with you. We would communicate through your attorney. Well, I was a point of contact, just like Claire is your point of contact. So That's I was different. interested in information, for example, like just the status, nothing confidential, but had you just simply revealed that your findings would be presented in an open meeting, I'm just saying I got received nothing. Right, and just saying, you really, you're one signature out of 1,126. The fact that you say you're the head of this committee and that your attorney wrote to us saying that he was the attorney for Don Frazier and the committee means the city has a policy. When you're represented by council, it's council to council communication only. Did you so, communicate anything about no, it? Why would I communicate with your attorney when I haven't even told it to my client? I guess that's what you don't seem because to get. Because I wasn't asking for the same information you gave tonight. Well, you anyway, don't seem to get that. Right. It's the citizens' petition. It was not Councilman Fraser's petition. So it's I the citizens' it. petition, and you keep acting like it's Councilman Fraser's petition. It was not. It belongs to the citizens. Um, I'm not taking anything away from Clara or the did staff. Did anyone say it was Councilman Fraser's position? Oh yeah. Well, he that's just said. <laughs> I'm hearing that. He just no. said repeatedly, that. repeatedly. He said you're being sued by my attorney. That's not true. It's either. been referred to, and we got kind no of no legal actions have been filed against this. Are you town. represented by counsel? 
Are you represent I'm sorry, you passed an unconstitutional law that would allow three members right. of this council to vote me off. But you and the like committee are represented by council, aren't you? Uh, and so to question, follow the rules, uh, I can only deal with your council. You'll have to ask the Hancock. I don't think he's my counsel. Then you need to have him send a letter saying that he's not your counsel he anymore. Was, he, he represented me on this matter. And I That's paid my him. point I exactly. Paid him exactly he's nothing for that. <laughs> We've got a letter saying he is your counsel. So until he takes that back, we don't have any choice. It's okay. It, Dan Cox is going to win the 8th District Congressional District race in Westminster. So. He's a great man. Knock, knock. Yes. Can knock, you? knock. Citizen here. Thank Again, you. it's not all about Councilman Frazier. I did talk a knock on a lot of doors, and unlike uh, Clara, who got paid something, all of our work was volunteer. So I think somebody did a little tip to the hat of the hard work that we did too, but it seemed for the most part the usual backslapping on paid. The citizens, taxpayers are paying people to look at that, and a lot of citizens, well, there was a handful that did a lot of volunteer work. So. Um, but also, it's not just about winning, and I, I'm concerned about this argument, and you made the same argument when I came in when uh, Councilman Wance tried to have Don Frazier's name taken off the ballot. Uh, it's not just about winning, it's how you play the game, and it's about the process. And so I am concerned about the process. I'm not taking away from whatever integrity was put through there, it's just that I'm not so sure had the big spotlight been put on, we don't know, we just didn't know how things would go. And we still, there is, the, the law says you could present it or you could mail it by registered mail, return receipt requested. I totally disagree that we did meet that deadline. I have the return receipt requested on the 20th and that's what the law says. Registered mail, return receipt requested, it's not received, no. it, was, it was mailed. You're wrong. And, and those signatures, even if we had the 22%, those signatures deserve to be counted, and I hope that that will be corrected. Um, because of the way it was done, again, there's an open complaint filed with the Attorney General's office about how this was done. Regardless of how much personal integrity showed up at the end, the point is that we didn't know. And had you just come out and said the referendum failed and hadn't provided any other supporting documents, that, that's a much harder burden to overcome than the way that you did do it. It's just that nobody knew how it was going to be done. And so those procedures need to be, to me it's not just, I don't want to hear, well you won, so shut up. Um, because um, even Mr. Ebal, uh, even all citizens, even those with law degrees, can read the law. They can take an open meetings class. And I encourage every citizen and those watching to go online and take the open meetings class. You can get a certificate and then you can just be as just as the smart as- A certificate as doesn't make you a lawyer. You gotta pay us a buck. You right. gotta do the, the law school and then you've gotta be good Mr. enough to Ebaugh, pay us the bar. All citizens, even citizens with law degrees, oh, music I'm degrees, school. They can take the open meetings class. I can, I can read uh, okay. PhD uh, uh, things on <laughs> the open. The <laughs> open that doesn't make me an expert. On the open, open meetings law is for the Catherine, citizens. You've had the, the floor it's for, five for the citizens. And yes. seconds. Excuse me. Time to wind it up. Okay. Um, then I just wanted to. Uh, Part of the reason that there was such concern about it was because there was no statutory authority to remove a name because a citizen requested it to be removed. All citizens who allegedly want their names removed can file a lawsuit and go before a judge where the process will be transparent for all to see. A closed door process of removing names from a referendum petition would never reveal if the mayor pressured or even threatened citizens with his own misrepresentations of the petition to write a letter to have their name removed. Just the right number of bogus letters could be claimed to have been submitted to conveniently make the petition fall one signature short of the 20%, which is why the process as laid out by Jay Gullo violates the Open Meetings Act, and which is why a complaint has been filed with the Attorney General's office. Each signature represents a potential vote, and so counting signatures should be just as transparent as counting votes with multiple tiers of checks and balances. Why wouldn't Mr. Gullo, the mayor, and whomever else did not want would not want to conduct this important business in open meetings, All just right. so no I allegations that's could enough. be made. I think made. I'm going to call time on you, Catherine. Okay, thank you. I Seven just want to get that four on the record. Seven minutes and Thank enough. you. <laughs> Marvin Flickinger, 880 East Baldwin Street. 
Uh, when does this petition become official? Are you going to make it official on, on Monday night? Is that what I'm going to? If they vote with me, I'm going to make a motion. Is it going to be an official document Monday night? I, I don't know what you mean by official. But well, is it going to be uh, public information? It's public information right now, after right now. tonight. In other words, I could get a copy of this petition. Yep. And uh, I take it, uh, since it's quite a few pages, I'd have to pay for it. Uh, yeah. What do you get for such a document? How much would that cost me? Uh, I, don't, I don't know what the rate is. 1120 will you, will you know by Monday night? You have to talk to them. Then you you can get it electronically, too, so there's other okay. options. Now, Councilman Fraser, you're continuing harping about the salary of, of Jay, and yet this very petition, you know how much you added to his salary? If Don't it wouldn't know, be for you the know? petition. Oh. It's not his petition, the citizens did. Huh? You know how much of his time was spent on that? I don't know. I'm saying that, but he spent some time on it. No, I just you was talking about salary. coming back from Mako, where I talked to the city attorneys from lots of different towns. It's extraordinary that our attorney comes to all these meetings and bills the town. I think the people I talked to when I walked door to door think they're being fleeced by the high salaries and legal fees that are being charged. And to you complain town. about Henry's salary. I, no, guess, I just think that's extraordinarily high. I guess that's high. In, uh, in line with most of the people. That this is a little people. town. How many uh, when you're, voters did let, you say we you had? keep quiet and let people talk when they're talking. You, you, you asked me a direct question. When your answered. wife was county commissioner, how many people in that in the, in the county office building was making far more money than what he's making? What did she do about it? That's, see, that's a question to me. I thought that I could respond to your question. Um, she's right there. Ask her. Well, because that she didn't do anything about it because they're getting quite a, few, a lot of salaries down there. We we're not in favor huh? of big salaries. I tried. I didn't vote for all of them. Well, that's, he's trying too, and ain't going to work. Uh, <laughs> now, going to the water bill come up again. I was out at McDonald's, and there was a fellow there from New Windsor who lives all by himself. Mm -hmm. And he said, how come your water bills are so high in Tony Town? I said, well, yours is higher. And I, oh, no, they ain't either. I said, yes, they are. He pulled out his water bill, a single guy, $208. I said, Ryan, you know how much of mine was? I said, there's two of us in the house, and we don't try it. We don't waste water, but we, we, we use water. I said, mine was $124. He says, I don't believe it. I went, come right up to the house, got my bill, and took it. He said, I don't believe this. He says, can I have this? I guess he's taking it back to New Windsor. <laughs> I don't know. But these people complain about our water bills, and they don't know what they're talking about. Thank you. Okay, i got to talk now. Well, you've got to be first Barbara, to the podium. <laughs> I'm going to be very brief. Barbara Helter Bridal, 435 East Baltimore Street. I've been coming to these meetings for maybe six, seven months now. And as you can see, there's less and less people every month. These are supposed to be open so citizens can come and speak. Well, nobody wants to come anymore because it's just like a free-for-all. You hear the same thing every time you come over and over and over and over. And it's just like beating a dead horse. And I'm getting fed up coming too because I'm tired of listening to the same thing over and over and over. Things that are past get talked about again, bickering back and forth. It's just making our town look bad. And I think that more citizens would come out if there wouldn't be so much of this rehashing everything all the time. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Barbara. Anyone else have anything to say? Robert, on agenda items that haven't been said. Yeah, I am going to beat a dead horse. Uh, because uh, I am one of the people that came for the meeting on June the 22nd because it was posted uh, out in front of the building and I heard that there was going to be a meeting. Um, usually when there's a meeting it's under events on the website but I didn't see the meeting posted on the events on the website. But um, I came specifically, uh, the door was locked but they unlocked the door and um, I asked Henry if there was a meeting and he said it's closed and you can't come and I said well there's there's no part of this meeting that's an open meeting and he said no it's closed and you can't it's come. Closed. 
Correct. Okay. So I'm just a little confused because in the minutes it says that there was a vote to close the meeting. So did that happen on that day or on another day? There wasn't a legal vote to close the meeting. Well, I don't know. Who wrote the minutes then? I asked them. I mean, the minutes well, say June the 22nd, and it says there was a, a vote to, to close, close the, the meeting me before the closed meeting began. Okay, so there wasn't a, that part of the meeting was not open to the public. We didn't convene a regular meeting, but the fact that the council was gathered, we had to make a motion to close the meeting. Okay, well, I thought, I thought there would be an open meeting in order to close the meeting, and that all but so the public could watch and hear what was going on that's what the law requires okay I, ju I just wanted to no purpose for an open meeting prior to the closed meeting okay. well I, th I we'll just have that's to, as a we'll county commissioner that's that. what we did we always right. open the meeting even if it was the only thing we were doing was having a closed meeting we had to have an open meeting in order to vote to have a closed meeting so the public could see that the people voted and how they voted and what the general topic was that you were having a closed meeting for so that people would have an idea of whether that's really what you talked about in your closed meeting because you're not supposed to talk about anything else except what's in your closed meeting. Right. So anyway, uh, I think that might have been a problem. And um, my water bill from uh, when I lived, when I worked for Governor Ehrlich and lived in Glen Burnie, we had six adults in the house, and the water bill was about 180. So I just want to say, <laughs> it should be a lot less. Back in Glendale. <laughs> How many years okay. ago was that? Uh, yeah, when was that? Yeah. Anyone else have anything to bring? You before? said Governor Glendale. Yeah. No, Governor Ehrlich. When I worked there, I still have the house, and there's about six people in it. Anything else? Anybody else have any uh, comments on the agenda items, Bob? Good evening, Council. I happen to be on this council and mayor of this council 26 years. This is the worst I have ever in my life seen. Believe me. Jim, I'll get off this subject. I'm tired of it. Is there anything going to be done with our streets this year? I'm sorry? Anything going to be done with our streets this year? Well, we we're in the process of, of doing something with our streets. We've got a budget to repair some streets. In fact, I just sent Henry a, a, an email today from Governor Hogan's <coughs> office announcing a $25 million grant, uh, most of which will be devoted for the municipal street repair that we need to apply for. So I, he's, <laughs> he's uh, mm. It just just got it today, so we're, we're in the process been, of doing it. It's already been processed and processed. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So we're we're very fortunate. The governor has uh, has, has remembered us again this year. The, the the normal allocation wasn't what we expected. wasn't what we got last year, but this extra twenty five million is going to help. So, okay, thank you. Anyone else have any comments on the agenda items? All right, hearing nothing, uh, before I call for adjournment, I just want to make a couple comments. I just want to restate what a great night the um, America's Night Out or National Night Out was last night, and how what a great job our um, Lieutenant Costello did, and Nancy, and everyone else who was involved with preparing for that. It was such an important event, particularly during this time of national turmoil, where every day we uh, turn on the TV, we hear news of uh, uh, law officers being killed in this town or that town, and it, it weighs heavily on our uniformed force, our first responders. And I think this is the kind of thing that shows support the fact that we had such a great turnout we had so many citizens come to the police station last night and and let our officers know that we they were behind them and they supported them had to make them feel great and i'm so happy that uh, that we had the crowd that we had it was just a 
just a good time for everyone. And I'm, I'm, I'm just very proud of our citizens and, and the turnout, and I'm very proud of our police force and the way they organized it. Uh, I failed to mention at the beginning of the um, meeting when I swore Carl in that he's filling Angelo's remaining term until May and consequently he'll assume Angelo's duties as liaison to the police department. So I just wanted to clarify that and make sure that was um, uh, in the record. Also last month when I made some appointments, I failed to mention that um, I have asked Daniel Haynes to represent us on the um, Carroll Regulatory Commission, Carroll Cable Regulatory Commission. He agreed to do that, and I believe he's attended a, a meeting already. So he may be um, with us Monday to give a brief report. I'm not sure. Be but fun. I wanted to make sure everybody knew that we finally got a <coughs> person back in the saddle on the Carroll Regulatory Commission. Great. Now I'll entertain a moment for adjournment. Uh, can I make a comment before you adjourn? Uh, our Mayor Pro Tem is in the Carroll Magazine and uh, really nice write up, really looking good and good for Tawny Town's image. Thank you for uh, your work there. Your accomplishments are written with, and a very nice picture. Thank you. <laughs> Anyone else? Can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. And a second? Second. In favor say aye. Aye. Like sign, so carry. See you on Monday. I have to remember to do all that. What do you mean, Carl? What's wrong with What's the that? Oh, it was <laughs> Why didn't they like the idea? It's a great idea. <laughs> well, I, I think your idea <laughs> is great, and I think we can do something <laughs> for gateway signs, much. except yeah. that yeah. sign was not a gateway yeah. sign. And Bob Mitchell said it himself. Yeah. That's not a gateway sign. Didn't that well, something? Oh, Diane, you want me to grab your Oh, that's, that's not his intention. I'm glad you're back. So when he said that, that convinced him, well, it doesn't even matter at this point. If I get him by singing the same song, that would be a lot better. Well, that's good. A lot of he things. Is he? Yep. Said I would have a motion to um, pay Atherton, but I don't think I have to do that.